practice, to live it out. And that's why I have this picture up here. This is Josh. I met Josh Friday night at the conference. And um, that's when most of the people were arriving at the conference. And he was doing what I normally do. He's by himself amongst a, a whole host of people. So I walked over to him, introduced myself. And the first thing he said, he was very honest. He said, well, I'm just overwhelmed. You know, it's just, I'm very uncomfortable. There's it's a lot of people out here. and." Um, just feeling really uncomfortable. So I just encourage him just to, you know, just meet one person. Just one. You know, you don't have to walk up to a crowd of people, just one person. But prior to walking over to Josh, I, I saw a young lady, she was standing alone by herself. So I encouraged Josh to go over and just introduce himself and talk to her. And um, God, you know, God is just so amazing because for like two reasons. One, he took my advice, which doesn't happen often. <laughs> Two, it, it worked out. I mean, within, I'm literally, within less than a minute, they had their phones out, exchanged information, there were smiles all around. And that made my heart feel good. Amen. And that was Friday night, after coming back Saturday from hanging out with some disciples, I see Josh and his sister again, smiles, hanging out. I don't know whether they're coming or going, but they were having a good time. Then on Sunday, uh, as we get ready for this big service, uh, I see Josh I'm coming down on the uh, escalator, and I see Josh by himself. I guess he was having his quiet time. And so I interrupted his quiet time and asked him how things were going. And he said things were going great. You know, uh, the sister, she had to leave early. Um, and, but they exchanged information. Josh is from the Bay Area. She lives there in um, Orange, California. And he just felt really good. And, you know, so I wanted to take this picture. Don't normally like taking pictures, but I wanted to take this picture because it really touched my heart. This was the best part of the conference for me. I mean, all classes aside, just being able to exercise one of my favorite scriptures, Galatians six ten, and we have, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially those who belong to the family of believers. So, and also too, this was the first time that he wasn't with that sister, but now he has a smile on his face anyway. So, that really encouraged me, so I was, I was very thankful to be a part of that and be used by God to encourage somebody else. And so um, I'm grateful for that. Um, but as I said earlier, then after after the conference, um, flew back to Charlotte, and then I, you know, God answered uh, one of my prayers uh, as far as getting a two from one. I got to go to Hawaii and I got to go to serve. And, um, I, you know, and unlike Little Rock, Arkansas, Hawaii was on my bucket list to go, so I really appreciated that, and uh, it was an amazing experience. Um, very grateful, very humble, uh, life-changing experience. Uh, we had disciples there from Indonesia, South Africa, Canada, Kansas, Arkansas, Georgia, North Carolina, uh, Pennsylvania, Maryland, California. Um, it was just it just really moved me. It, it brought back memories, um, respectfully, of how things used to be when I first became a disciple. Mm -hmm. But also, too, uh, this trip was different because every, with respect to um, everything that happened with um, Hurricane Helene and Milton, this was the first time I've gone out and it wasn't a part of disaster recovery. Mm -hmm. um, so that was different. Um, I went out. Um, to New Orleans in 2005 for the Katrina relief. I went to Haiti in 2012 um, to help out there. So this was different. And another thing was we were all together all the time. It wasn't like we were split into two different teams. So um, we really got to know each other. Um, we laughed, we cried, we shared, uh, very vulnerable. And also um, the efforts that we participated in was at a facility for houseless youths between the ages of 14 and 24. The facility is called RISE, Residential Youth Services Empowerment. And so we got a chance to fellowship, uh, purify their uh, facilities, and also just being able to put care packages together and um, break bread with them and um, you know, um, share our hearts with them and then they share it with us as well. Uh, I have a few pictures uh, <coughs> that I would like to show, and I think this thing works. I'm the first one using it. Jake. <laughs> <laughs> this is, I can see this is great. <laughs> Jake. Um, <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> Here we go. Sammy, Shannon, Katie, Kaylin, 
Gabby, Gwen, Genesis, Emily, <laughs> Eileen, and Elisa. These folks changed my life. I love them. Good <laughs> Stay in touch through the WhatsApp. Um, I had to learn that because I wasn't on that prior to being with you folks. So, um, you know, but um, again, another learning experience. But within that, also with the working at the uh, RISE facility for the houseless use, we also participated in um, agriculture sustainability, which in layman's terms, we pulled a lot of weeds and some more weeds. And when you do well at pulling weeds, they find more for you to pull up. So <laughs> um, we did that at a botanical garden, a nature reserve, and at a farm. And um, it was, it was really, this is the farm, this, is, was, this was the last site that we uh, served at. Um, and um, again, we got a lot of time together, a lot of fellowship, a lot of great opportunities to give back. But um, one sister, she just, she put in some words for us um, as far as pulling the weeds in regards to, I guess uh, this is a metaphor in regards to within our lives, there are things that we need to pull up, Amen. that we need to get to the root of. In order so uh, things can, you know, God can plant that good seed on us so good things can grow up. Mm. But we have to get to the root of some stuff that we've been holding on to. Yeah. Some conversations that we need to have. Uh, some things that we need to put behind us. Some things we need to overcome. And some challenges that we may be facing. So that was amazing that that was shared. We were actually at, um, it was supposed to be a meditation reserve. But they still had us put weeds while we were meditating. So. <laughs> but, but amen, it was all good. But I also want to share about um, the love that we received. That was the biggest uh, thing uh, in regards to the sharing, um, is that we were given to so much. So I remember, uh, I give Jake some credit, he spoke about expectations and not having expectations. And I did not expect, I, went, I expected to go give and serve, but I didn't expect to be given to so much. They loved us so much, it was, it was amazing, it was incredible. We had uh, dinners at the elders and elders' wives' house, the, the uncles and aunties as they referred to, and they really took care of us uh, on the Sunday service. Um, and actually, speaking of their Sunday service, today is the 35th anniversary of the Oahu Church in Honolulu. So I'll be checking out that live stream in about five, six hours from now. Um, and also, too, today, well, this year is the 30th anniversary of Hope Worldwide Singles Corps. So I was glad to be a part of that. I encourage you to get out there, um, seek opportunities to get out there and serve. Uh, it's a great opportunity. Obviously, families can do it with their kids as well. So, um, but also too, at the, at the Sunday service, there was a baptism. And um, in my 22 years as a disciple, I've never shed tears at a baptism before. And, uh, but it was something different. Like I said, it hit different that day. Whether it was the sun, the grass, we were at a park, um, you, had the, you had the lagoon and the ocean, and um, to be honest, it was one of those baptisms that you have after service is over, but we ate first, so I was feeling even better. <laughs> that, you, know, um, you know, that's a good thing. It, it was perfect. It really was perfect. And even the look on the sister's face, ready to, um, you know, surrender her life to God. Her name is Kelly, by the way. And um, it was just an amazing experience. And they really celebrated all the, all the people who came out to serve. Um, they had a stand up, and um, I want to uh, sh show this necklace that I received. They made necklaces for all the brothers, and earrings and bracelets for all the sisters. And this is not a this is not a memento. This is not a souvenir. This is a treasure, truly to be treasured. Um, the sister, her name is Kayal. I made sure to get her name, and I even asked her. You know, she's Hawaii, half Hawaiian and half Filipino. And uh, I wanted to let her know that I will be sharing about her um, during communion and how I really appreciate this. Um, it's just amazing that the love we received. So it was a great experience, and I'm very thankful that God blessed me with the opportunity to do that and gave me the nerves to get up here and share about that. <laughs> so um, 
let's go to God. Oh, um, one more thing. Yeah. I bring it to the cross. That's right. Um, when I think about the cross, I think about um, Hebrews 12, verses 2 and 3. Um, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you do not grow weary and lose heart. Um, I used to think that being close to Jesus was um, serving and giving. But prior to uh, going to California for the conference and going to Hawaii to serve there, um, I felt more like God and Jesus when just enduring a lot of negativity, slander, accusations, false accusations, gossip, hate. But um, I chose the scripture, it, I was just led to the scripture, and also it reminded me of when I first got baptized and celebrated um, my first spiritual birthday, actually, and I ran to a brother who was, was working uptown, and I was sharing with him uh, what I was going through. And how also, you know, it just, you know, happened to be my spiritual birthday. And just trying to get advice from him. And he just said, you know, you need to do that. And I'm going to do what? He said, you know, what your spiritual birthday says. I said, what do you mean? He said, yeah, your, your spiritual birthday is March 4th, right? And I, I said, yeah. He said, that's what you need to do. Regardless of everything that's going on around you, you just need to fix your eyes on Jesus and march forward. I was hoping he would give me something better than that. <laughs> <laughs> it, it makes a whole lot of sense, and I'm grateful for that, um, even to this day. And it just reminds me that you know, just whenever facing adverse situations or you know um, circumstances, to fix your eyes on Jesus and to march forth, and it doesn't have to be your spiritual birthday to do that. So <laughs> let's go to God in prayer. Mm -hmm. Father God, thank you so much for. Uh, who you are and all you've done and continue to do in our lives. You are indeed the great I am. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You're the beginning and the end. Um, you are a Heavenly Father and you know, our most trusted friend as well. Lord, you're amazing. Um, thank you for this church. Thank you for everyone here, Father God. Thank you for the heroes and sheroes that are in this church that inspire me to draw closer to you each and every day. Lord, as we take the bread that represents your body and the juice that represents your blood, Father God, let us remember who you are and where we need to be focused. And I pray all this in the Son's personal name. Amen.